Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. I want to take a moment to talk about Eric July and the Ripperverse. And is it important? Does it matter? Well, for those of you who don't know, Eric July is a YouTuber, also known as Young Rippa. Hence, the Ripperverse comic universe he just recently launched. He's also a self-proclaimed anarcho-capitalist, although he has adopted the term libertarian lately, uh, simply because I think it's more marketable. But I'm not sure if he's actually changed from an anarcho-capitalist to a libertarian. And there is a little bit of a difference there. Libertarians want much more government, but based off of the rants of Eric July, I would say that he wants much less government than the libertarians do. He's also a political pundit. You can find him on the news and why it matters quite often, as well as a podcast host. He hosts his own podcast called For Canon's Sake, where he talks about, a lot of people confuse it with politics, but it's actually culture. And he talks about comic books and the larger pop culture scene. He, as well, he is an accomplished musician, rose to the top of his charts with his middle band, and honestly, he's got a couple of good tunes. His most recent venture being that he just launched the Ripperverse, something that he announced a while back on his channel and said that he was going to rival DC and Marvel. That is his goal. He wants to rival and be a direct competitor to them and show people that they don't just have to send their money one way if they would like to continue the American comic book experience. Although there are a lot of other comic book companies that have in the past challenged the DC and Marvel uh, I don't know, ethos, I guess. We'll go with that. Sorry, lost my train of thought there. Think of comic book runs like Spawn and, uh, oh, what is it? Cyber Frog is another one. But why is this so important? Well, if you actually understand a little bit more of the meaning behind why it's important to have another comic book company, not just for him. Because as far as I understand it, Eric July has never said he wants to do a comic book company just for him. It's been a goal of his, an aspiration of his to do one, but his motivations changed when he, as a consumer, felt like he was being betrayed by the companies who he had been giving his money to for years. As far as I know, he describes himself as a comic book lifer, which I think a lot of people are. From here, we have to understand one more critical thing that Eric July has talked about, and that is a parallel economy. With all these companies out there seeming to change their logo every month to fit the political narrative of that month to make sure that they're shown as some version of an ally to whatever cause seems to be politically expedient, he wants to have a different economy, a separate one, a parallel one, an economy that doesn't care about the politics but cares about the consumer and cares about the people who are purchasing the product. By doing this, and by espousing this, he has actually accomplished the first part of his goal. By giving a small portion of the economy to this parallel economy. Giving people an out from not having to spend their money with these massive multinational corporations that simply feed money into the pockets of politicians, and when the politicians can't actually pass laws because they tend to be illegal, mostly in America. They just ask the corporations to do the talking points for them, trying to change and sway the populations. This is something that many people who are avid consumers of pop culture, movies, television shows, comic books, music. This is something that many people have seen, many people have grabbed onto, and many people don't seem to understand why it's going on. Now, this video isn't to get into that, but maybe I can make one in the future. So, what exactly is a parallel economy, and why is it so important to somebody like Eric July? Well, 
from the betrayal that he feels and many people do feel like they have no place to go and no one to turn to for their entertainment and wanting to get away from it. It seems to be important to him to create that space for people like him who want an outlet, who want to be able to have that escapism instead of the edutainmentism that seems to be going on lately. So the Ripperverse launches and it becomes the largest crowdfunded comic in 24 hours, which is baffling. In addition to that, he also didn't use websites like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. He used his own website, and I believe, if my information is correct, he actually set up his own servers. So it seems to be that he's backing up what he preaches. He's doing his best to avoid using the infrastructure of these massive multinational companies that seem to only want to push whatever political narrative of the politicians they fund in order to get laws passed for them. Now, the reason that I'm phrasing a lot of things the specific way that I am about politics is because if you watched Eric July ever, you would know that the biggest issue that he has on the planet is government and their ability to simply reach their hand into your pocketbook and pull out money whenever they want to. And when they can't do that legally, they simply have other companies push you away so you can't spend that money. It's largely the same thing. You either don't have money or you have money that you can't spend because your social credit score doesn't seem to be where it needs to be. So for those out there wondering, why does this matter? Why does this small comic book matter? This rip averse well, it matters because there are people out there who believe in the diversity of thought, conversation with others, and ultimately being lost in fantasy and being able to forget about the world around us. By being able to do all of these things, we can simply build a community together. There seems to be a community online and in the real world that doesn't want to have disagreements that doesn't want to just get lost in fantasy they want to make sure that they inject reality into fantasy as much as possible eric july is actually fighting back against that he put something out that i hope will be fantastic i have already ordered mine i actually have two coming one uh, a signed one is going on the wall back here, and another one is for me to read. And full disclosure here, and I have said this in my private life, I'm less of a comic book fan and more of a comic book student. And I say that very intentionally because when I was younger, I didn't exactly have the money to go out and buy comic books all the time. But as YouTube became more prominent, I did find creators that would cover entire comic book storylines, and I love listening to those podcasts. I listen to those podcasts in much the same way I would listen to podcasts about the ancient Roman gods or the ancient Norse gods or even the Japanese gods. Those ones are insane. And I find it interesting, to say the least. I love comic book characters. I grew up with many of the animated shows. However, I think I've only read one or two comic books in my entire life. But I have dedicated a lot of time in learning the backgrounds of characters from creators that I've trusted. Again, I'm less of a comic book fan. I'm a character fan. I'm a comic book character fan. And I'm more of a comic book student. However, I will be proud to say that Eric July's book will be one of the first comic books that I have picked up, probably the third one, but the first one in my adult life, and I will be reading it. And I'm not just reading it because it's some guy who decided that he wanted to uh, make some money and he was tired of Marvel and DC. No, he wants to build and be a part of an economy that runs away from the current economy that we have. The parallel economy is what Eric July is going for. And for those of you who don't seem to understand the importance of why the Ripperverse exists in the first place, it is because you have people out there that are not trying to participate in this culture war anymore, but trying to give you an out for it. 
So to Eric July, never met you before. One of these days, it would be fantastic to meet you, but congratulations. I wish you much success. I'm slightly jealous, but you give me something to reach for. And I think you give a lot of people something to reach for. So with my little bit of jealousy and my lot of bit of ambition, hopefully one of these days, maybe I'll reach the levels that you have and hopefully more people will reach the levels that you have. So until next time, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you for checking it out. I know a lot of you may not know what this is, but go check out the Ripperverse, okay, ripperverse.com, and make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. In addition to that, if you like this video, hit subscribe and share it with all of your friends because there is an algorithm out there, and even though the channel is small, it still does affect the channel. It's really weird. Whenever we put out a lot of videos, we have noticed it. So let me know what you guys think about the Ripperverse, the parallel economy, and the idea that it's okay to have a sect of the population contributing money in a direction that they want to, instead of contributing money in the other direction. And until next time, we'll see you guys right here on A Drink With Crazy. Peace. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.